The barrier to entry for creating content, whether that's music, photography, professional filmmaking, or if you're really unlucky, YouTube, is lower than ever these days. And with all of that content comes the need to keep it organized and backed up at every stage of your workflow. With the help of today's video sponsor, Synology, I'm gonna show you how I complete my entire YouTube workflow from ingesting footage, editing, syncing, and backing up all of it within the Synology ecosystem. So first things first, let's talk about hardware. This is the heart of the entire process and what allows me to keep everything so organized and safe, and that is my Synology system. I'm running a rack-mounted RS822+. Plus. I have a dedicated video on that system if you want to check it out. Luckily for this video, everything I'm going to be going over is possible on pretty much any Synology system you have. So while our Synology system is our NAS and where all of our data lives, we do need a machine to actually create our content on. I'll give you guys exactly 6.9 seconds to go down in the comments and guess if I'm a Mac or a uh, Windows boy. Guess what? You're all wrong. I'm both. Well, I guess that means you're all right. Anyway, as a user of both, I'll be showing you how my workflow works under either use case. So it doesn't matter if you're a screenplay writing Mac user or a PowerPoint meeting Windows user, I got you. All right, so as a YouTuber, I film a good bit of content. Obviously that content needs to go somewhere before I can actually begin working. Now, I know you're thinking the obvious first step is to just take that footage and import it onto your computer, and that's usually correct. However, I like to do things a bit differently. Seeing as how my Synology NAS has a lot of storage on it, and it's got 10 gigabit networking, why not just skip the step where I offload my footage onto my computer, and then eventually move it over to the NAS, and just move it to the NAS in the first place. Now, this is possible to do with a standard one gigabit connection, but you'll get much better performance if using 2.5 gig or 10 gig. Oh, and make sure the computer you're editing on has the same speed since transfers over the network are only as fast as the slowest link in the chain. I'm not even joking, I have a 2.5 gig to USB adapter that I use when I'm editing from my MacBook on the couch. So setting up the folder on your NAS is actually quite easy. I just create a shared folder in the Synology File Station app, which allows me to connect directly to my NAS from any machine in the entire network. So in offloading the footage, I just plug Drive into my editing machine and transfer all of that footage over to the shared folder. From this point on, the shared folder will act just like any other local folder on my PC, except that it's actually connected by the other end of the ethernet cable. So why even do this? Well, there are pros and cons to the setup. One of the pros is that since everything is stored on my NAS and my NAS is accessible via any machine on the network, that means I can edit from any machine. But why would I wanna do that? Look, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, editing can be boring. Sometimes I don't wanna be at my desk on my PC and I would rather just be sitting on the couch using my MacBook while editing and watching TV or something. Maybe that's a dumb reason, but honestly, I love it, fight me. The other reason is that since the footage is already on my NAS, it makes it so much easier to keep everything backed up and safe using snapshots. More on that later. It also benefits from the RAID configuration of your NAS, but make note, RAID is not a backup. It's redundancy, not the same thing. This setup isn't perfect though. Like I mentioned earlier, for a smooth editing experience, you'll probably want faster than a one gigabit connection for any device you're using and even your NAS. That may not be a problem for you, but it's just something that I needed to mention. The main con here though, is that this setup won't allow you to edit on the go. I know plenty of people out there like to take their laptop out and about like some kind of non introvert and as you can imagine, you won't really have direct access to your footage if you're not home. Don't worry, there's another way to do it. So let's talk about the other way, because I understand that I may be in the minority here. Most people will want to offload their footage directly onto their PC or maybe some external drive that doesn't require any fancy networking and allows you to edit from anywhere. Luckily, Synology has a really cool app called Synology Drive that gives you the flexibility of editing locally with the peace of mind of having your footage backed up to your NAS. 
Oh, and it's all done in real time. On your NAS, you'll want to install the Synology Drive Server app, which will allow you to select a directory on your NAS to use as your storage location. Then on your editing PC, you'll want to download the Synology Drive client app from the Synology Download Center. They have versions for Windows, Mac, and even for you Linux nerds. This app is really cool. When you run it for the first time, you'll go ahead and connect to your NAS, specify a location you want your NAS to sync local footage to, and then a location on your local machine that you want to sync from. Now, when you import all of your footage locally to your machine, Synology Drive will automatically sync whatever's in that folder directly to your NAS. All of this happens in the background too, so you'll be getting all of the benefits of knowing your data is safe and snug on your NAS while you're editing away on your local machine. But Brett, remember how you're a lazy bum and you can't sit at your desk, so you need to sit like 20 feet away to edit on an entirely different machine? Now what? Well, remember, Synology Client works on both Windows and Mac OS. Also, it's set up to offer two-way sync, meaning that not only is my Synology Drive client sending files to the Synology Drive server in real time, but it works the other way around. So when I edit on my Windows PC, the data gets sent to my NAS. Then when I shut down my PC and move to my MacBook, the NAS is already sending all of my footage and project file updates to it. So now I'm free to pick up right where I left off. Pretty neat, right? There are more settings you can tweak, like if you only want it to sync one way, or if you want to limit the sync to certain folders or file types, but in its default configuration, it's a really powerful tool. These techniques will work with pretty much any content. I use it for editing videos as well as creating my thumbnails. The concept is exactly the same. Now that my data is safe and sound on the NAS, we're good, right? No, we need backups. The Brett. It's already on the NAS, which has a RAID setup, and I'm running snapshots. Yeah, that's good, but not a backup. I mentioned earlier that RAID is redundancy, not a backup. Depending on which configuration you're using, you can afford to have one or more drives fail while still accessing your data. However, this isn't a backup since if the device itself fails, is physically damaged, or stolen, none of that matters. And snapshots, similar to RAID, just offer more redundancy as all of the snapshots taken are stored on the same drive pool. Sure, it protects you from when you accidentally delete stuff that you shouldn't have, but again, when you cosplay as an electrician and fry your NAS, none of that matters. So let's talk about backups. Synology definitely has you covered in this area. I could honestly do an entire video on different ways to back up your data, but We'll focus on one of the best ways to do it in the Synology system, and that is to use the Hyper Backup app. Hyper Backup gives you extreme flexibility in where you want your data backed up to, whether that's locally, to a remote Synology NAS, to the cloud, or basically anywhere using rsync. If you have a second Synology system, then it's an extremely simple process. Even if you don't, using rsync to send your backups to another system is still pretty easy. As a tech YouTuber who has all kinds of different systems, I'm a fan of rsync as it allows me to back up my Synology files to my TrueNAS system. And you're free to have these backups run as frequently as you'd like. I run mine once a day, but your workflow might be a bit more accustomed to run it much more often. The world is your oyster, or the world is your NAS, or the NAS is your oyster. Anyway, backups are important and Synology gives you the tools you need to make it a painless process. Sure, you could stop here. Your footage is stored locally, it's synced to your NAS, and it's backed up to another system. It's a pretty tight workflow. However, we do need to follow the 3 to one rule, meaning that we have three copies of our data, two of them stored locally, with one of them being remote. And your remote offsite backup could very well be just another Synology NAS that you keep at your friend's house against their will, but you could also store it in the cloud. Yep, Synology even offers a cloud storage solution if you wanna go that route. Now I've done both, I've set up my own remote server and honestly just storing my third copy in the cloud is so much easier. Synology's cloud service is called C2 and honestly it's pretty similar to all the other cloud storage providers. It's a subscription based model that means you have to pay more depending on how much you're using so let me explain how I use it. 
When I first started my YouTube journey, I thought that I had to keep every single second of footage from all of my videos, whether that was A-roll, B-roll, all the bloopers, everything. As you can guess, all of this footage adds up and I quickly found out that I didn't need three hours of silence or boring content. This would also mean that if I wanted to store all of this in the cloud, it would cost a lot of money. So what I do now is keep my last five projects in their entirety on my main NAS as well as my backup. Then once a new project is finished, I will rotate the old one out then move the final folder up into the cloud. And my final folder only contains the final export of the video, my Photoshop thumbnail project, and any contracts that I may need to keep. This process works for me and make sure that my recent projects are still available and backed up, but also saves me money in making sure that all the old stuff is just narrowed down to a finals folder that can be sent to the cloud. And with that is my entire workflow using the Synology ecosystem. We have the flexibility of being able to edit on multiple machines while keeping everything in sync with Synology Drive. We have everything backed up using Hyper Backup, and we've sent everything to the cloud using Synology C2. Overall, I'm extremely happy with my setup and have full confidence that all of my data is backed up from every single step in the workflow. Now, is it perfect? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's perfect. Unless someone blows up my server rack and then convinces Synology to delete my entire C2 instance, then I'm good. Let me know what your workflow looks like or what you would do differently. Obviously, I know mine's not perfect, so I'm really interested in hearing what you guys do and maybe steal some ideas. But if you like this video, drop a like below and subscribe if you wanna see more Storage Boy stuff. Links to all Synology products I use or recommend are listed down in the description below. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my three, two, one, backup that I can definitely rely on for uh, moral and financial support. You guys are awesome. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you're still watching, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one.